looking for contact from Jermaine O'Neal, got a piece of it. Way oh, a facial! Yes, and a foul! Way Six second differential here as James takes to the rim! Oh, four. We'll be back with more from Miami in a moment. That's how much respect I got for a guy like that. And what uniform will you be wearing next year? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh. Why even ask that question? We all know LeBron's just going to stay in Cleveland anyway. That was a pretty good game. And now it's time to play some Modern Warfare 2. If you happened to exist back in the year 2009, then I would imagine you did exactly what I did after watching that TNT game between the Cavs and Heat. Just went straight to playing some MW2. That Call of Duty literally came out just two days before that LeBron vs Wade matchup, and I was already addicted to playing it. As soon as that post game interview was over, that's exactly what I went to go do. But it looks like I should have been listening a little bit closer to what LeBron was saying before I turned the channel. What if I told you that that epic D Wade dunk over Verjao would end up only being just the second most significant event that took place that night? Many of us didn't realize at the time that LeBron actually gave us a crucial little hint. Still confused? Well, then let's listen to the full interview. No, I think I've been thinking about it lately and what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna change my number next year um, I think no guy in the NBA should ever should ever have should ever wear 23 and I'm gonna change my number next year because it, that's how much respect I got for a guy like that what number you wear next year um, probably six my Olympic number for all this to make a little more sense we have to go all the way back to that November 12th game in 2009 if you didn't know already, Michael Jordan was in attendance for this game, sitting next to Pat Riley, and Dwayne Wade had just signed with Jordan Brand. The stage was set for a highly entertaining battle between Wade and LeBron, while the GOAT was watching, and D. Wade knew exactly where MJ was sitting. After this dunk, Wade looked directly towards the area Jordan was sitting at and said, that's how you do it talking about the missed dunk that LeBron had just attempted the possession prior. So the fans, including Michael, was in for a treat. Ultimately, LeBron and the Cavs would get the W, and by the time everything had calmed down, it was as if all of LeBron's emotions rose to the surface and was inspired to say this. I think I'm gonna change my number next year. LeBron announced that he would be changing his number beginning in the 2010-2011 NBA season. And he wasn't kidding, because he put his money where his mouth was and actually filed the paperwork required for a number change and sent it in in March of 2010, just a few months after that game. He chose the number 6 for a variety of reasons. First, we all know that was his Olympic number, but also because of his admiration for Dr. J, along with the number 6 connecting to his children's birthdays. So there you have it, a perfectly understandable reason to choose the number 6, as well as why he wanted to switch it up in the first place, to show respect and honor MJ. But this is LeBron James we're talking about here, king of misleading the media. Everything seemingly points to the fact that this all could just be a red herring. He knew exactly what he was doing all along. First, when he said what he said in that post-game interview, many hardcore conspiracy theorists began to speculate that that meant that maybe LeBron was planning on joining a different team after that season. I think you're leaving. Wilbon thinks you're staying. Which one of us is the bigger dope? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the one thing you guys got both right, okay? So, Tony, you think I'm leaving, and Mike thinks I'm staying, so, 
you both got the think part right. <laughs> so. But once he sent in the paperwork, all that talk soon went away because the rule said you only have to fill out paperwork if you want to change your number on the team you're already on. So if he was planning on leaving Cleveland, then why would he even had bothered filling out the paperwork? So that had to mean he's staying, right? Well, once again, keep in mind, he's always had a history of messing with us. Maybe he filled out the paperwork just to squash all that speculation of him leaving. Or maybe the Cavs themselves told James that, hey, you know you better fill out that request form now before it's too late, which forced LeBron to go along with it to not raise any suspicion. Then those same conspiracy theorists desperately tried to reach for another possible explanation. Some people, jokingly or not, said that maybe he just wants to change his number because it's somewhat of a tradition for superstars to do so. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of players do decide to change their number at least once during their tenure in the NBA, like Kobe and even Jordan. So yeah, it was just LeBron's turn to keep it going and do the same. But that wasn't quite juicy enough. There had to have been more to this sudden jersey change, right? I tell you what, the Chicago Bulls fans certainly thought that there was more behind it all. They automatically believed that LeBron was heading to Chicago once free agency arrived. And the reason they delusionally thought that was because Jordan's number 23 was already up in their rafters. So they thought that LeBron obviously had to have known this and that he gave them some sort of clue that he would be playing there in a number 6 jersey since 23 wasn't available. I mean, it does make perfect sense for them to think that, but the Bulls fans failed to realize that the Miami Heat, specifically Pat Riley, had already retired Michael Jordan's jersey as well after the 03 season to honor him. Uh, we want to honor you tonight by hanging your jersey forever, number 23 from the Raptors of the American Airlines Arena, and that no player ever again will ever wear number 23 for the Miami Heat here. Thank you very much. So when LeBron ultimately chose to take his talents to South Beach, the dots had finally been connected. And that interview, which took place almost 8 months earlier, was I believe the exact moment he made his decision. And not after he was eliminated by Boston. You could see it in his face that the combination of the Heat's well-run organization and the presence of Jordan in the crowd that night, he finally figured out what he was gonna do once summer came around and wanted to cover it up by saying he's only changing his number out of respect for Jordan. But it was clear that he just wanted to join the Heat and knew that the number 23 was not an option for him to wear there. So you're probably thinking, then why would he even go out of his way to drop a tiny hint in the first place if he wanted to keep it a secret? Why even tell us that you're switching numbers? Well, wouldn't you want to get the fans used to the idea of a number change ahead of time? And another big question you might have is, then and what was the point of the whole decision thing? Um, in this fall, man, it's, it's very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. Well, at that point, it was all just for show, and the only thing that was tough was just revealing it. He had prepared and decided long before. Was it always in your plan to go and play with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh? Well, I mean, but hold on, what about this? How long is it going to take for you to disrobe Mario Chalmers of the number six Miami <laughs> Heat jersey that he's currently wearing? Uh, I think, uh, you know, I give Mario a call, man, and see if uh, we can work something out. <laughs> well, just think about it. By him subliminally letting the Miami Heat organization know that he's coming there, essentially gave Mario Chalmers enough time to go through the long process of changing his number way in advance. So by the time LeBron arrives, it It'll just be a smooth transition for both of them. That was his way of giving Chalmers a heads up ahead of time. In fact, it didn't
didn't take very long for even the NBA store online to make the change. But there was no worries, because Chalmers originally always wanted to wear the number 15. But Mark Blunt was already using it when he first entered the league. So there was no need for David Stern or Pat Riley to pressure or bribe Mario at all. He probably knew that he would be wearing a different number next season way before the decision. Wait, hold on a second. Then what about the elephant in the room? You know, that whole situation that supposedly went down with Delonte West. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that the main reason LeBron ultimately left Cleveland in the first place? Well, maybe that's exactly what he wanted you to believe. Just think about it, by letting people know what Delonte allegedly did, that gave LeBron the most perfect and extremely understandable reason to get the hell out of there, making West look like the bad guy, while trying to avoid looking like a villain to the Cavs fans. It gets you thinking, maybe that whole situation with his mom was just overblown on purpose, distracting us from his real motives. And it worked. LeBron executed a masterful plan in order to escape the situation he was in over in Cleveland. His plans to team up with Wade and Bosch finally became reality, and even Craig Sager himself had no idea that the answer to that question he had just asked LeBron was literally under his nose the entire time. All he had to do was look down at the court he was standing on. It's funny because while everybody was freaking out about that D-Wade dunk, it's said that LeBron will not be discussing his free agency after that game on the bottom of the screen. But little did they know, he kinda did. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Cavaliers fans reacted like this after his decision. Anyways, all I'm saying is, if LeBron truly felt that way about the NBA retiring Jordan's number for good out of respect, then why did he go back to the number 23 after his stint in Miami? I mean, he at least tried to be a man of his word by actually attempting to get the other players who happened to wear the number 23 at that time to give it up as well, because Braun believed if he gives up the number, then everybody else should also. But those other players did not agree with that suggestion at all. Now sure, this video is definitely full of conjecture, there's no doubt about that, and could just be a coincidence or something, but I'm just gonna go ahead and call it a very interesting conspiracy theory. I believe that interview in 2009 was actually a way of him letting us know his plans. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, and of course, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.